Okay, I think I'd like to continue with the cylinder. Um, and I'd like to do this looking at the uh, vector potential. So rather than look at the more complicated situation we did last time, um, what I'll do instead is I will look at um, just this surface current K, all right? Um, just the kind of current that there was on that return path uh, for the um, coaxial cable. So it looks a little bit different, but it's pretty much the same thing that we did in the last in the last video, right? So we've got that surface current K going on there. Um, so what I'd like to do is say, okay, if we have this surface current K going up the side of this um, side of side of the cylinder, what is the vector potential, right? Um, so, may as well say here that we're, our concept is the vector potential, right? And um, that's defined uh, by uh, this equation, basically. B is equal to the curl of A, right, where A is this potential. Uh, you'll notice this is very close to Ampere's law. In which case we had mu naught j equal to the curl of the magnetic field, right? And you know the most important thing we learned is that there's an inverse to Ampere's law. We've got our differential form and our um, integral form, and so if we knew the current, which we do here, we could get uh, the magnetic field from that. And now we're going to be able to do a similar trick using basically the same concepts to get to get the um, vector potential from the field, right? So here we said if we had mu naught times the um, current flux through a surface, we could um, find the magnetic field in certain symmetry conditions uh, by the line integral around the circumference. Basic, basically, that line integral has to be something simple. It's zero. It has to cancel out. Uh, you know these sorts of these sorts of things that always work as far as um, as far as the symmetry is concerned. And so we'll do the same thing up here. Now we'll have the amount of uh, field flux, magnetic field flux, through a surface is going to be equal to the integral of the um, vector potential. So this is how we're going to proceed. We're, we've, got, we've got this here, the um, current, we'll find the field from that, and from the field we'll find a flux that'll let us find the um, vector potential. Okay. So um, to get us going with this, we should identify all of the stuff that we are given and what we want to find. And in this case, we're given a um, uniform surface current. On a cylinder. Right, and that um, surface current has a current density. And um, the cylinder has a uh, radius. So we have K, and let's use big R here. So this distance here is big R, okay? Um, and what do we want to find? Okay, we said we wanted to find the vector potential. And we said that that's A. And we're going to find that in steps, like, like we said, said here. We're going to go up the ladder, just like we did in, um, just like we did with Gauss's law previously. So we're going to be doing um, these integral things, which means we have to have a 
reason, reasonably clear setup. It's not too difficult in this case. It's not too difficult. Uh, basically because the only thing we have to really worry about is where to put the axis of this wire here. And we'll, we'll just put the wire axis on the z-axis. That seems simple enough. Um, and then we'll have to um, set up two regions, right? We have region one that's inside inside the um, cylinder and region two, which is outside. So um, we want to set up regions. And um, those are region one is inside. inside is R is little r is less than big R so we'll have some little r coming out from here that's less so this is in region 1 right and region 2 little r the will be um, outside of big R R is little r is greater than big R so this is our field point this is the radius of the cylinder okay so we're going to have to define this field point. And I just did. Um, there are a couple of other things we'll have to do for setup as we go along. We'll do those as we go along. Um, and that's basically what we need to solve the problem. Um, so we're ready to pick a strategy. Now the strategy I already told you um, in, in a um, very high level is from the current get the field, from the field get the potential. Simple enough. Uh, we start with Ampere's Law. Nice and simple. Something we're all um, familiar with by now. And um, with Ampere's Law, first we determine our loop, right? So that is the um, Figuring out where the ampere, ampere's, amperean loop is, is part of the setup that we'll do as part of our solution. Um, then we'll find the line integral to find B, right? So this part here we do first because we can do it, we can do it once and it'll, and the, and whatever this is will be the same both inside and outside because it'll deal with R, it has nothing to do with big R, it has nothing to do with K. This just has to do with the field. Um, then we'll have to find the flux. in um, the different regions. So we'll find it in region 1 and we'll find it in region 2. Okay. Um, and in this case the flux all depends on how much of this current here is, um, so this is where the current is here, this solid line. How much of this current is inside of one of these dashed lines, right? If R is less than R, the dashed line is here. If R is greater than R, the dashed line is there. So we'll have different answers in those two cases. And after we've got those, we'll go ahead and put it all together and um, write the magnetic field. Um, at this point, it'll just be um, it'll just be a division, um, and we'll give give that some um, what should I call that? We'll write, we'll write the field as a um, piecewise function, okay? Uh, it, won't ever, it won't actually be, um, well, yeah, the field will not be continuous. Okay, so we'll do that. And so that's the first part there. Next we'll go down and we'll find the potential. And you know, these two equations look the same, these two equations look the same. Basically, we'll use the same procedure we did here to find, 
to find the um, potential. The same, the same procedure for finding the field we'll use to find the potential. Um, all very simple and straightforward. Um, and we do all of the same things. Number six, uh, not number one again, it's number six. We determine the loop. And this loop will be a little more complicated. That's no, not a little more complicated, but it'll be a little bit different from the other one because the direction of the field will be different from the direction of the current. Um, then we'll find our line integral for the same reasons. Then we will um, find the f flux in region one. Then we'll find the flux in region two. And then we'll write the potential. And this stuff is getting smaller and smaller each time I do this. There's now plenty of room on this. There was not in the previous incarnation. So let's see if that holds true when I do all of these things. Now, okay. So now we're going to go ahead and um, do the Amperian, uh, the Ampere, Amperian loop. Um, we did that up here already, right? The Amperian loop is going to be just around here in the XY plane. Um, it can go up or down here as much as we want because um, if, you, if you're up here, then with this infinite cylinder going up and down forever, um, you can see exactly the same thing as you see here. Right, because it's infinite just because you've displaced a little bit doesn't mean you've changed your perspective. Um, so in this case, it's um, just a circle parallel to the xy plane. Okay, and that's all we have to do. Um, the line integral, uh, we'll, we want sigma b, right? Uh, that is going to be equal to this line integral of b dot dl, um, which is the integral from 0 to 2 pi, since we're going around the circle like that, um, like this, excuse me, for that one, of, um, let's see, b dot phi hat, because it's going around in the phi hat direction. Then this dl part includes the phi hat plus the R D phi, uh, which is the um, which is the differential element for phi, and that just ends up being two pi r b phi. Finding the flux in region one is actually particularly simple because this guy here has no current inside, right? And there's no current in there. This current's all here, so phi one is zero. Phi 2, on the other hand, um, right there is equal to um, the total amount of current here. Now, this has a current density k all the way around, right? So we're integrating from 0 to 2 pi um, times k times, in this case, the di differential element, element is big R because we're stuck on this. Um, d phi, which is 2 pi big R. Right. So that's that. Um, now we go in to use this guy here. So our field is going to be um, B is equal to phi hat. So our field's completely in the phi hat direction. Um, and that'll be of mu naught times phi divided by this 2 pi r. Right. Um, so uh, in region 1, this phi is 0, so we just have 0, the 0 vector. Um, and in region 2, we have um, 2 pi r times k in, in, in this place here. So we have mu naught times k over the 2 pi's cancel, right? So we have mu naught times k times r. So let's just write. I had, I think it looks cooler if you write mu naught k times r over r. 
right, in the phi hat direction. So this is region one, so r is less than r, and this is big R is, or little r is now greater than big R in region two. So that's our, um, that's our field. Now we want to write the field. Um, now that we have the field, we want to look at what happens in the cylinder. So uh, what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to uh, set up my loop so that it touches right here at this, at this point over here. So if we draw out the field, you know, B phi of R, this is our R, the field looks like this. And jumps up at this spot and we have a discontinuity. And um, this point here has the field at mu naught k, right? So I'm going to make my Empyrean loop be around here, okay? And um, that way, that way when I have the zero, I just have the zero. If I'm in here, I just have zero. And if I'm out here, I have this thing. I don't have to worry about proportions or anything like that. Um, so in this case, we have a rectangle, right? Uh, that's perpendicular to phi. So it's um, coming out this way. Right, so phi is going this way, we've got our rectangle here. Um, and we're going to make it some height z, or from, going from minus z over two to z over two, right? So that's a height z. And this distance here is going to be um, from, r to, from big R to little r, so that's r minus big R, right? off to the side here, big R to little r. Okay, so we've got we've got that there. Um, and so I'm going to take a little tiny break here, not a big huge one, but a little tiny break, just because if I don't, my um, video camera is going to stop in the middle of this and I'll have to redo everything. So we're right here. Um, all we have to do is start going down here, as you, as you um, saw before, this is all quite simple. Um, and we'll be able to get everything running smoothly. I'll, I'll be back in just a second, right after I got a little scotch. Okay, I'm back. Now, uh, what we want to do is we want to use this rectangle um, to figure out what A is, right? Now, the first part here for finding sigma a is just the same as we did before. Uh, we're doing this a dot dl. Um, but with that, we're going to have to go along here, right? We go up, go across here. So this is, let's call this a s, right? Um, so a s, and this is along a distance r minus r, right? So that's that part of that integral. This part of this integral, um, everything along here is also going to be the same. It's going to be this um, a sub r, whatever a is at that um, r value. Actually, I could yeah, I could use the other another notation, but it get kind of confusing right now. Um, so we come up here. This is a distance z. So that's that's the line integral for that. Then we come back, that's minus um, a s again, because because we can translate this up and down, and it makes no difference. This has to be the same as this, only with a minus sign, because it's going the other direction. So it's r minus r. Then we have minus again, uh, this time a of big R. So this is a different value from this one. Uh, but it still has the same distance z. So we have a of little r minus a of big r times z because these two are equal and opposite, right? So I think you've all got that. Um, oh crap, 
Okay, well, we'll live with this. Um, have, having zoomed in, out on me. Um, phi I, phi one, excuse me. Um, the flux in region one, region one is in here, right? Which is where B is equal to zero, that's zero again. Okay, um, integral of zero is zero. Phi two, so this is perpendicular to the phi direction here, so we just have, um, so we'll get all of this in this. So this is going to be the integral from um, minus z over two to z over two, um, and the integral from big R to little r of this stuff in here, right? Mu naught k big R over little r, in the phi hat direction, dot phi hat, um, uh, let's see, and this guy here is going to be just ds, uh, dz, I believe. Okay. So, um, yeah, actually we don't want an s there, one r, sorry. Okay, so now we go ahead and we can um, integrate this. The z part just integrates to z, so we have mu naught um, k times big R times z, so big R there. Um, this is just 1, so we have the integral from big R to little r of 1 over r. Um, and the big and that integral is something we know that's just um, ln of r. So we have phi two is mu naught k r z times ln of big r over little r. Okay. So now our a uh, at some point r is going to be a r minus a big r because you'll notice that when big r, little r is equal to big r this ln the natural log is one is uh, the natural log of 1 is 0 right so this is 1 this is 0 this whole thing is 0 so um, we end up using this as a reference so that's some something nice um, in this region here right this region here, that's still zero. And in this other region, now we have mu naught krz, or mu naught kr, and the z is going to come out of that, right? Because we're going to integrate that out, or we're going to divide that out, times ln r of r, r over r, excuse me, z hat. Um, and this is with little r is greater than big R, and this is little r less than big R. Um, so that's actually what we want. That's all we need to all we need to find. Oh, still don't have enough room. That's all we ne really need to find. Um, but taking a look at this uh, this spectra potential would be nice. So we had a discon although we had a discontinuous field. Here we have a continuous field, right? Uh, or a continuous, um, no, A is a field, uh, the vector potential is a field, but uh, we have a continuous um, vector potential, which looks kind of like this. Uh, it's, it's, it's got a non-continuous non derivative here, but other than that, it's continuous. So in this case, we have a continuous, um, a continuous function, even though it came from a discontinuous one. Okay, so I think that looks pretty good. Um, I hope you like it very, very much, as much as I liked it. And um, I will see you in class.